Vice Vinay Prasad for MedPage. I want to talk about the president's health. Over the last week, we've had a number of news reports about the president suffering from COVID-19. And I want to start by wishing him a very fast and full recovery. But I think it's important to talk a little bit about the treatments the president has received. We know the president's been taking several medications. He's on vitamin D, zinc, famotidine, these are medicines that, to my knowledge, have no convincing proof they improve outcomes in COVID-19. He also received a pooled antibody from Regeneron, a product that is only offered in clinical trials now with just a handful of people who received it as compassionate use. The president is among that group. Finally, we know the president has been started on remdesivir, a drug that has a very modest improvement in patients who have mild or moderate COVID-19. And lastly, the president received dexamethasone, a drug with a very large benefit for people who are mechanically ventilated, a smaller but real benefit for people who are oxygen dependent and hospitalized, and perhaps even a deleterious effect for people who do not require oxygen. So put it all together and the president is on quite a cocktail of medications, vitamin D, zinc, remdesivir, dexamethasone, a Regeneron compound, and let's not forget, potentially famotidine. I think when you look at these medical decisions, we have to wonder, is the president suffering from VIP medicine? VIP medicine exists when we offer services to very important people, wealthy people, politicians, celebrities, that we wouldn't offer the average person. Now, VIP medicine sounds like it's always going to be better than regular medicine, but it has real risks. For instance, the Regeneron compound may be associated with an infusion reaction that might make the president look sicker, have a fever, have low O2 sats, may have even prompted hospitalization. Dexamethasone, it's a drug that works very well in the recovery study for people who are hospitalized requiring O2 and mechanical ventilation. But that same study shows that for people whose symptoms started less than seven days ago, for people who don't require O2, the drug may have no benefit or even be deleterious. This is all shown in the pre-specified subgroup interactions. Finally, taking a novel, pooled antibody is not necessarily better. In fact, it could make things worse. We have no idea. That's why it's unproven. That's why it's in clinical trials. The CEO announced that one of the reasons why dexamethasone could be given so early to President Trump is because he received the Regeneron compound. But that is merely a hypothesis in need for data that the use of this pooled antibody somehow accelerates the recovery phase and puts you in the spot where you benefit from dexamethasone. There are thought to be two clear phases of COVID-19. There is the viral proliferative phase, and there is the immune phase, and it's thought that dexamethasone works in the immune phase. Simply giving an antibody doesn't necessarily move you further along. In fact, all that T-cell-mediated immunity in the early phase could potentially be thwarted by steroids being given too soon. So overall, I think the care of President Trump raises many questions. One, it's possibly he's a whole lot sicker than what we're led to believe or he's had this virus for longer than we think he has. But the other possibility is that he's receiving VIP medicine, which means more drugs sooner and new combinations. And it sounds like that ought to be better for patients, but so often it isn't, and it can be detrimental. So I'm concerned for the president, I'm concerned for his medical care, and I guess I'm concerned about the message this sends to the broader public, that just because there are therapies that might work doesn't mean that we know that they do work. And potentially there's a reason why we're not offering a bunch of therapies to someone who still has the odds in his favor. Because even though he's 74 and even though he's overweight, most people who fit those criteria with SARS-CoV-2 do fully recover. And that's not a situation where you want to try kitchen sink medicine. That's a situation where you want to stick to well-accepted evidence-based practices. It's one thing to go with the expanded access route when someone's on death's door. It's another thing entirely to do it early when somebody has the odds on his side of doing well. So VIP medicine, it isn't always what's best for people. And I think the president's case may be an example of that. I'm Vinay Prasad and this is MedPage Today.